Investigators have found practically all nuclear reactors in the European Union need safety improvements, repairs, or upgrades. The European Commission undertook stress tests on the reactors after the disaster at Fukushima Daiichi. Their safety review exposed hundreds of problems. NHK World's Takashi Ichinose reports from Brussels. Nuclear experts examined the reactor to see how prepared they were to withstand extreme situations. Flooding, earthquakes, airplane crashes. The stress test covered 143 reactors. They found nearly all of them need improvements. We did this intensively and thoroughly. We can conclude that there is room for improvement of safety for most of the nuclear power plants. The European Commission compiled their findings in the final report for the European Heads of States. The report criticized several countries for failing to implement safety measures adopted in the wake of the accidents at Three Mile Island and Chernobyl. It found if plants in Sweden and Finland lost power, the operators would have less than an hour to restore safety systems before catastrophic damage. The experts identified problems with earthquake detection systems in France, the country with the highest concentration of nuclear plants. The report estimates fixing those problems will cost up to 25 billion euros, about 32 billion dollars. The report doesn't go as far as recommending the immediate closure of specific plans. Still, European leaders say member states need to act quickly. We should together get together with the operators and the regulatory authorities to act rapidly so that the highest possible standards can be guaranteed very soon. Paying for safety improvements may be extremely difficult in the light of Europe debt crisis. That put extra pressure on national budgets. The problem outlined and the cost of fixing them may amplify Europeans' concerns about nuclear power. Takashi Chinose, NHK World, Brussels. Japanese researchers say they may have found a clue to unraveling the mystery behind what magnified the tsunami that struck northeastern Japan last year. The key was an active undersea fault. The March 11th earthquake triggered a tsunami that inundated large sections of the Pacific coastline in the Kanto and Tohoku regions. These computer graphics simulate how high the waves would have been based on the conventional theory that tectonic movement caused the waves. But according to this theory, simulations of the tsunami in northern Tohoku indicate that the waves were much lower than the actually observed 20 meters. Professor Emeritus Takashi Nakata of Hiroshima University wanted to find out why this theory fails to explain how the tsunami were magnified. He discovered a previously undetected active undersea fault along the coastline. The conventional theory was that a tectonic plate on the landward side moved drastically, tri triggering a five-meter tsunami. Nakata simulated what would have happened if the active fault shifted along with the plate movement. His simulations were able to recreate what actually happened. He says attention should be paid to similar undersea faults. One is the Nankai Trough, where a mega quake is predicted. These red lines are believed to be such faults running from the Tokai region to off Kyushu. I think we can more realistically prepare for future disasters if we take measures based on simulations that active faults can cause tsunami. Professor Nakata says researchers need to examine such undersea faults as soon as possible. The Nuclear Regulation Authority is considering an on-site investigation of potentially active faults near a nuclear power plant under construction in Aomori Prefecture, northern Japan. Authority Chairman Shunichi Tanaka said on Wednesday that any doubts about active faults near nuclear plants must be cleared. He said the authority may order the operator Electric Power Development Company to reinvestigate potentially active faults if necessary. He also said the authority may decide instead to conduct an on-site investigation at the OMA plant. The remarks came just two days after construction resumed at the plant. The work was suspended in the wake of last year's nuclear disaster in Fukushima. 
Electric Power Development Company says there are no active faults under the compound. But some experts have pointed out that a major active fault off the coast could trigger movement in a fault beneath the Oma plant. The nuclear authority is already planning on-site investigations of six nuclear facilities, including the Oi plant. The Oi plant was the first to resume operation after last year's disaster at Fukushima Daiichi. One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. And are the health concerns that people face in the future, is there a realistic attitude towards that? No, the, the, uh, the nuclear industry is saying that there'll be about 100 cancers as a result of these four nuclear accidents. And, and frankly, uh, you know, I've, I've said and my analysis shows that there'll be closer to a million. So um, the, the same people they trusted back before the accident are telling them now, well, first they told them an accident couldn't happen, and now they're telling them that uh, the consequences are, are minimal. And there's a, a great distrust for both Tokyo Electric and um, NISA, the regulator, the equivalent of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, they simply don't trust their authorities and, uh, uh, and are looking elsewhere for, uh, for scientific information. Well, why would you think a million people would get cancer? You know, I got that number um, from uh, going back over the records on Three Mile Island in Chernobyl and, um, and did some ratios, uh, of course, um, this this accident released something on the order of 100 to 1,000 times more radiation than uh, than TMI and uh, and and um, comparable levels, perhaps three times more noble gases than Chernobyl and perhaps a little bit less cesium than Chernobyl, but but comparable, coupled with the fact that it's a higher population density in Japan than I, than at either site. There's some epidemiological data out of uh, TMI that shows a uh, statistically meaningful 20% increase in lung cancer um, in the five years after the accident by Dr. Stephen Wing down in uh, North Carolina. So the, the, using that evidence and, and ratioing for the amount uh, that was released in the population density, um, I'm coming up with something on the order of a million cancers. We're seeing that already. Um, there was 4,000 kids were tested just in the last couple months and almost half of them had thyroid nodules. Now, normally, um, about 1 or 2% of kids would have thyroid nodules. So we're seeing an enormous increase on a cancer precursor um, for thyroid cancers in a, in a sample size of about 4,000 kids. So um, I'm also seeing um, samples from indoor um, uh, dust. We're getting people sending us vacuum cleaner bags. and uh, the indoor dust in these homes is astronomical. One, one bag that was tested over in Europe came back with 100,000 disintegrations every second in a two-pound vacuum cleaner bag. So that's on the floors in their home. And, of course, the Japanese sleep on the floor and, 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 and essentially live on the floor for, um, you know, where they sit on the floor and things like that. So internal contamination in Japan um, will be a significant factor, and neither the Japanese government nor the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency has taken that into account when they do their numbers. The four units on site that are um, that blew up um, are going to cost around um, you know, seventy to a hundred billion dollars, and the question is, do you spend it now and risk high exposures to people? Um, for what gain, or do you, you know, entomb these plants with concrete and uh, and come back in a hundred years? That's a question the Japanese have yet to answer. What would you do? Um, I would entomb them and come back later. You know the the. Um, why would you want to dismantle them? There's, certainly there's the visual impact and the embarrassment and, and things like that. But, uh, but to my mind now, you know, the, the lives of the people going to clean up and the potential for cancers uh, outweighs that. And I would do basically what we've done at uh, Chernobyl, which is to uh, put a sarcophagus around it, uh, you know, basically fill them with concrete. I would also then bore under the plants and continually withdraw the groundwater. Uh, because there's still going to be seepage of radioactive material into the ocean and into the groundwater and keep that from seeping out into the environment.
but uh, I, I just can't justify in my own mind, you know, exposing, you know, tens of thousands of Japanese workers to high levels of radiation for just the physical effect of, um, of cleaning this plant up. One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. The European Union carried out stress tests to ensure a nuclear disaster like the one that occurred at Japan's Fukushima plant is not repeated on European soil. 18 nations took part in the study, all 14 EU states that operate nuclear power plants, as well as Lithuania, Switzerland, Ukraine and Croatia. The big message? Nearly all of the 134 reactors across 68 sites tested require safety upgrades. These are needed to cope with extreme emergencies such as natural disasters, explosions and even malicious attacks. Now, France is coming under particular scrutiny. It is Europe's largest nuclear energy producer, relying on reactors for more than three quarters of its electricity. Every single one of its 58 reactors in 19 sites were found to have specific safety failings. The French uh, particularly have had many accidents which have not been reported uh, in the past. Uh, it used to be that in France if you were skeptical about nuclear power it was almost, uh, it was almost the equivalent of being uh, seditious but in fact the French are beginning to worry especially about Fessenheim which is a reactor on the on the border near Strasbourg in Germany. That's on a fault line, it's near, it's on, the, it's on a river that could flood. Uh, there are problems there, but there are problems throughout Europe and I think this, uh, this report will not give many of them a clean bill of health. The need for improvements is urgent. Most of the European reactors are located in high population areas where more than 100,000 people live within a circle of 30 kilometres. All in all, the report estimates it will cost up to $32 billion to fix all of the problems across Europe's nuclear sites. how weird it starts to get when you just stop breathing. <laughs> 